Hello, and welcome to What You Need to Know About UX Design on Mobile IoT Apps. This webinar will cover some basic UX design need-to-knows about mobile application development for the Internet of Things. My name is Mary Kelly, and I am a RAD Studio and Interbase Software Consultant here at Embarcadero Technologies. We have a lot to cover on today's agenda. So we'll briefly go over what IoT is before diving into what users expect out of mobile applications, how IoT is different with mobile apps, and its influence on them. We'll discuss user experience in mobile applications with why user experience matters, some of the essentials necessary for IoT app development, challenges you face, some of the common fails, and also considerations to make while working on your UX design. We'll walk through some questions to ask as well as the experience process and UX model before seeing a few of the ways that Rad Studio can enable you to provide a great user experience across your mobile apps. Let's briefly go over what IoT is and how it works. IoT, also known as the Internet of Things, is just the connection of everyday objects to the Internet and each other, so connecting you to the Internet. Any person can connect at any time with any device from any place using any backend service. A device or thing is any object that can be assigned an IP address that collects and shares data without the need for people to intervene. That can be sensors and vehicles to alert drivers, heart monitor implants, even the Fitbit device sitting on your wrist. And the goal for IoT is to enable these devices to operate with little need for human interfacing, allowing for organizations to increase the value of their business by providing enhanced and customized experiences to users. Devices and sensors collect and send a large variety of data that they amass through gateways that act like a bridge to networks so that your data can be passed to your cloud platform or your data center where the data is then processed using analytics to create useful information that can be visualized, filtered, and reported on by other applications. The information can then be acted upon by your mobile devices and other machines that allow you to control and monitor the devices from remote locations. And information that is deemed important either by the software platform or by the end user can be pushed to their smartphones and they can also send back commands to those devices. And IoT is everywhere. The number of connected devices is growing at an exponential rate. You'll find IoT devices in retail stores, in self-driving cars and drones, security, home automation, media, healthcare, in so many more industries with so many more uses. Especially when you take into account the number of mobile devices on the market today that are utilized in these industries. In fact, it may be easier for me to tell you who isn't utilizing mobile apps for the Internet of Things. Users of mobile apps, whether thing connected or not, expect that the application they use will work well. As those expectations get higher, we have to work harder to meet those requirements to make apps relevant and useful to the end users. Accessibility. So how's the performance in accessing your app? Does it take a long time to load the data? They want an exceptional personalized experience. So you're building apps that adapt or change to match the needs and interests of your end users. Real-time relevant information now. They want it to be simple and intuitive. End users don't typically spend more than a few minutes trying to set up and learn the navigation and processes of an application. When you walk into a grocery store and see a sign that says, download our app to see flash deals or check out faster, 
you expect that in the 20 to 30 minutes that it takes you to shop for your groceries that you have the app installed, an account created, you're logged in, and you're scanning the items in your cart like you've been using it for ages. Swipe and zoom are two standard gestures that users expect across all their applications for mobile. They don't want a huge battery drain when using their applications. We know that they take a toll on smartphone battery life, especially if you keep services running in the background. And mobile users are just different in general from web and desktop users. Laptops, for instance, have typically been always connected to a fast internet and have a large screen with physical devices like keyboards and mice maintaining their focus. While with mobile users, we tend to multitask through 10 things at once. IoT is one of the biggest trends in the tech industry, changing the way that we interact with applications. When designing for mobile IoT, you need to place a greater emphasis on understanding a user's needs in context to a particular use. A lot of IoT ecosystems are mostly asynchronous. We expect that our laptop or our desktop will have a constant connection. And we have this same expectation that it'll be the same for a mobile IoT app. And we know sometimes that this isn't true. With many IoT devices running on batteries, they can't run continuously and maintaining a connection can drain those batteries quickly, so they only connect intermittently, meaning that not all devices sync at the same time, which can sometimes cause issues with creating a seamless user experience depending on the device delays. Code has to run in multiple places. There are more moving parts with the Internet of Things compared to your normal web services and that different functionality is also spread across a multitude of devices. IoT comes in a variety of form factors. Some of them have their own displays or flashing lights and sounds, while others require a web interface or a smartphone app to tell us what they're doing. And in some cases with IoT, it isn't even about the device itself. It's about the cloud service that has all of these devices connect to it and integrate to create a seamless single user interface. The Internet of Things changes how we interact with mobile apps. Mobile devices act as the main interface by which the IoT ecosystem resides. Most mobile apps are endpoints, but they also can be gateways that allow you to talk with multiple devices. Smartphones already have sensors and apps that gather info regarding the users, making them an easy choice to further extend IoT capabilities and functionalities in the future. They also allow you a more complete control over the features of the machines that you interact with daily. You can get data in an instant. And it also boosts your end users engagement. As a practice, taking users into consideration when designing products has been around for a long time. User experience is about creating usable functionality for your product in making it easily accessible across different devices and interfaces. Think of the main reasons why consumers abandon mobile apps. Did it crash immediately after installing? Was the time to access their data or start using the app really slow? Is it difficult to navigate or is the design just an eyesore? This is where user experience design comes in. First impressions are just as true on an app as they are in person. Your end user will always remember their experience with your product, especially if they went out and purchased a specific device for your application. That experience is what drives users 
to return to an application and find value. UX plays a huge role in whether your IoT app will be successful or not. From how your users learn the ins and outs of the app, navigate through tabs, and find it usable or readable. User experience allows you to find out what the interest is in your product and what their expectations are. If you have an app that doesn't fill a need by the users, then what's the point? Users are more likely to advertise for a product that they feel does its job, creating a connection to an application that drives them to want to use it again and again. By designing to the user's experience, you have a constant communication between the app and the users, allowing you to create the best environment that can actually reduce some of the basic user errors. For users, the less of a learning curve the better. So providing an IoT application that's consistent in its focus makes the overall experience of using an application better. The Internet of Things is complicated enough. There are a ton of questions to ask yourself as designers and developers and to also ask your prospective users. I've put together a short list of some of the questions to know the answers to before you start building out the mobile application to your IoT solution. So who are you building this app for? What are the different personas? What is the most important functionality? And how do you make sure that the focus is there? What are some of the scenarios that the app will be used in? You could create storyboards of what you think or want users to do with your apps. How do consumers integrate with those applications? And what is each screen used for? Is it really relevant or necessary to have it? And when you mock up some examples, you could ask yourself, why do I need to see this control? And you could start with, what am I trying to solve? What is the value? Is it for problem solving? Is it educational? Are there things that consumers might do that I don't want them to do? So how do I add boundaries and warnings to that? And is there data I want to reference in or from other apps and devices? And how am I utilizing those APIs? And also, most importantly, what data will be collected by my devices? I know the functionality, so what is the necessity to collecting more than I need? The world of IoT brings convenience and efficiency to us all but it also brings with it new challenges for UX design. One of the most inconvenient challenges facing UX designers is glitches, especially when that glitch locks you out of your house without your keys or doesn't make your morning cup of coffee. With IoT, the hardware that you're using is very specific with sensors and controllers compared to web where it's slightly more generic. Unlike laptops and desktops, even with mobile devices, IoT things are not always online. You might be working with a number of devices that are not only using the same or similar UIs, so it's important to consider the user experience across multiple devices. You might be working with multi-tiered solutions making sure that the mobile app is usable from the moment it's installed all the way until the user's process is completed can be complicated and if something goes wrong it can result in an app in the trash making sure that you have controls for safety and prioritizing privacy settings sharing options and passwords it requires you to rethink how you leverage different technologies such with cars. It's illegal to use a cell phone while driving. Maybe you want to make sure that calls don't go through when the car's in motion instead. And tech is really still the driving force for how we research and design our experiences for our users. One of the most common mistakes of UX design 
is when a GUI is too complex or cluttered. This is due to the pile-on effect. A lot of IoT devices and products nowadays haven't always had a display or a UI for consumers to use. So when the idea or option to connect and control your oven from an app arrives, all of a sudden there are endless possibilities of what you can come up with and all of those ideas quickly become must-have features. Inconsistency between platforms and device UI. Solid UX research is critical for any success in IoT and the consequences of improper research down the line include wasted time, the effort, rejection of certain features, and dare I say it, even entire products being turned down by users. Designing for UX is basically designing for flow. Flow is about moving forward to another page that contains content towards a goal. And mobile apps built for IoT find this especially a failure if you create a dead-end page. Content flow should be similar to telling a story. You start at the beginning, move to the middle, and accomplish something at the end. One of the major issues that we all hate to go through, we don't live in a perfect world so connections can drop, but glitches in the system can cause users to wonder if the app is really working when they don't see a response. In a lot of cases, there's too much content that isn't necessary for end users. If you build an app that contains unnecessary content, users can get lost and confused, and that really just messes with their experience. And the last common UX fail is web replication. When designing mobile apps in general, don't design them as a website. They tend to feel awkward and unintuitive to users. With IoT, the mobile application serves as a middleman between your user and the device. So it's essential for IoT apps to be optimized towards how the user feels when interacting with the app or web services. I find consistency of functionality to be the most important aspect of IoT applications on mobile devices. A lot of times, the point of an IoT app is to make our lives easier, to allow us to use less of our brains on processing the data that we receive. It can be overwhelming to see an app that is not only visually staggering, but that requires you to fill in most of the blanks to get from point A to point B. As I mentioned on common fails, clutter is the enemy to a good design. It's essential to get rid of anything in a mobile device design that isn't absolutely necessary because reducing clutter improves user comprehension. Utilizing a technique such as functional minimalism solves a cluttered UI. You want an application that maximizes clarity of its data. When you have an application that monitors and records data that's vital to your end users, make sure that that data is clear, understandable, and meaningful. You don't want data overload, so display clear visuals, minimal text, and a coherent UI. Just keep it simple. When you want to collect feedback that's valuable, be sure to give your users some time to form an honest opinion of your IoT mobile apps. First impressions may be skewed by the login and setup process, but once up and running can create some great experiences. An IoT mobile application is not a standalone app. You have several moving pieces and Users expect that the data from their Android will sync to their tablet or even their desktop quick and smooth. For all our projects, desktop, mobile, web, we have to build out prototypes. But for an IoT app, 
it's even more important to provide them so you can quickly get a user validated design that meets your users requirements. Creating some interactive prototypes and testing them with real users can really help designers understand the experience a user goes through while interacting with an app and how it connects to the real world experiences of interacting with connected devices. Obviously, with IoT, your devices are all connected to the internet and not safeguarding your devices and your apps is a major concern across the globe. Using smartphone authentication measures, encryption of both data at rest and in transit between the gateways and the backend servers, even API security, just designed for security from the beginning. Mobile apps are designed with the goal of attracting and keeping the user's attention. Their success is measured in things like time spent in the app, the number of features utilized, and so on. But in the world of IoT, applications are designed to build upon the real world. It's less about using the app itself and more about how the services are enabled and used. However, it isn't entirely or really all that different than mobile applications. IoT apps still follow the principles of UX design for mobile, including usability, ease of use, efficiency, and learnability to enable a connection with a thing's object, whether it's connected at home or as a wearable. So when designing for mobile, there are several general elements to consider that can help you begin your design. Here are a few across several industries. Of course, they don't replace your own user research, but are a good starting point for any UX design. Starting with small screens, when it comes to designing applications for mobile devices, you don't have the same spacing for those applications that were built for a PC or a Mac. How easy is it to get from point A to point B? Navigation is always something to consider when developing mobile IoT applications. Draw out a storyboard and see where the flow takes you. Simplify the onboard process. When dealing with multi-device interactions, it oftentimes means repeated authentications, gateway processes that change from device to device, and of course, switching to other services like Gmail for verification. And what happens when you go offline? When designing for IoT, you can't always assume that there will be an internet connection. Ideally, we would design for zero internet connectivity first, and then see how much can be done locally before you need access to the internet. Is your product upgradable? IoT devices and services can be a bit unpredictable, and creating a positive user experience can be difficult when users don't know whether their devices and apps will be supported for more than a few years. So providing a clear, understandable policy for support in the app that users can see to prevent any unwanted anxiety and to also help drive further business in upgradable sales. For example, with Microsoft, they clearly explain how long each of their products are going to be supported. Minimize the amount of data that users have to add to their forms, such as by logging in. Allow for a permanent sign-on. Most smartphones are password or fingerprint protected, and the risks of staying logged in on mobile devices is typically less hazardous than on desktops. Providing consistency amongst devices using shared components and minimizing unnecessary UI. This again speaks to clutter, providing a simple layout and keeping to it by not overloading apps or users with unnecessary UI. The Internet of Things involves a number of players with different ideas. 
In this kind of environment, you have the physical and virtual worlds colliding. You have software, hardware, and other services associated to connected objects working together. Meaning that designers, engineers, and business users have to have a common understanding of all the objectives in order to deliver the best user experience to the end user. Most IoT solutions start with an IoT platform that allows hardware analysis, data collection, connectivity, and application development to work seamlessly together, and then build out the solution on top of this foundation. And for these kinds of solutions or products to work, each piece or module from the hardware to the analytics to connectivity all play a very important role. Now UX designers need to understand each of those modules and be aware of how they affect the design because some of these modules aren't visible to an end user, which can lead UX designers to only focus on areas that users will see. Understanding mental models of our users allows us to shape our decisions around designing our products or services. It's important to set rules of usability and experience design to find ways to reduce the gap between the goals of our businesses and the way our users think. A conceptual model is an early part of the design process that basically explains how something should be done and how users think of tasks. Sketching out these models allows you to think about how you're delivering more intuitive applications while reducing the amount of time spent on UI design. The idea of this type of mental model is to help us in discovering and communicating the intentions of our mobile apps from a design level. It allows you to try to match the way your mobile application works with the mental models of your users. This itself should make the mobile app more usable and intuitive. Conceptual models are made up of tasks, objects, and connections. The tasks the user will perform with the mobile app, the IoT devices or objects that they'll work with, the relationship that the objects have with each other, and the mobile app along with the actions and attributes associated. Conceptual models make it easier for you to take a walk in your user's shoes and make sure that your products are both intuitive and usable. This provides the, your development team then with more detail so they can create better use cases and your UI design team can create the UI that takes into account the user's needs. Building IoT solutions requires data to flow between devices, gadgets, the connected application, and the internet. Let's take a look at a few of the featured capabilities in Rad Studio that help to build connected mobile apps. There are many ways in which Rad Studio supports the Internet of Things. With so many devices, we have a few protocols that are integrated to communicate with those devices. We have REST and HTTP client libraries for Wi-Fi devices, support for both Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth LE, LE or low energy is recommended for mobile and devices that are powered by batteries and also beacons. We have support for these protocols on all our different platforms and we also have an offering called RAD Server which is basically a REST API server that acts as a point or place to gather data coming from devices, sensors, and apps. Really the full back-end solution for IoT with RAD Studio. You also have access to a local database, IB Lite or ib to go for storing data directly on all your devices. In the IDE, in the Get It Package Manager, 
we have over 50 Internet of Things components or packages from different manufacturers that we've made component wrappers for and created some sample applications of them for you to learn how to use and integrate into your mobile IoT applications. To demonstrate how quickly you can access a REST API in Delphi or C++ Builder, I've added a few components to my form. The REST client, request, resource, dataset adapter, an FD mem table, and a string grid to show the data returned. I'm going to use the spitcast data at the HTTP api.spitcast.com site and api slash spitcast slash all for my resource in my request. Going to the dataset adapter and choosing my mem table for my dataset and setting my response for request one and then executing my request and binding my table to the string grid. At design time, I'm then able to see my data. I've gone ahead and created a new multi-device application in Delphi. And now I'll go ahead and show you the Fire UI multi-device designer. Now this feature isn't IoT specific, so it works across all your cross-platform applications. But Fire UI is basically a way for you to create user interfaces across multiple devices by using a master form to share the interface code, then using inherited views, giving you the ability to customize for the target platforms and devices. We have this style drop down menu that lets us choose our design time style of choice so that you can see or preview what the application looks like at runtime. The master view that we see here is where you would do most of your designing as it's a shared form. Then you can tweak the designs for the appropriate target platforms or specific devices at the view level. So if you plan to design for an Android device or have something specific that you only need to change on that platform then you would just create the single platform specific view that you need for that type of device. Now the great thing about using Fire UI for UX design is that it allows you to provide that consistency across your devices with platform specific behaviors for each of the styles for your customers. Understand who your users are. More times than not, many developers and designers will leave out who I consider to be the most important part of IoT. The users who will engage with the apps. Conduct research on your audience and see what their needs are. What are the ramifications? What are the boundaries of being connected? Asking questions gets you the answers you need to know. Focus on the functionality first. Designing your application with the best aesthetics isn't going to do much if a mobile IoT app is difficult to navigate, slow to load, or doesn't even connect to the thing's device. Fulfilling your mobile end users' expectations is always going to be an ongoing process, with the constant need for attention to UX design and not just new features. New phones and IoT devices are always going to be available, so make sure you stay up to speed on your prototypes and testing to ensure that your users get the best experience you can provide to them. There are a few additional resources that I want to mention as well. The first is our DocWiki site, which explains all of the Rad Studio features that I demonstrated earlier and provides a few FireMonkey applications that you can check out for yourself. I've also added two books here that I really recommend for anyone wanting to expand their UX knowledge base. The first is Designing Connected Products UX for the Consumer Internet of Things. We know that IoT has some challenges and design requirements that have to be met 
And this book really will act as a guide or a handbook for you. And the second is The Design of Everything. Now, it's not a book specifically on IoT or mobile, but it's a great read for really anyone who designs products. It's an insightful and compelling book that requires you to think on each page. For more resources, or if you have any questions that you would like to email to me, please feel free to reach out at mary.kelly at Thanks again.